off with the colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Alright, this is proof I did my walking <laughs> on the treadmill this morning I don't know, it hasn't come as easy as walking outside or walking at the gym for, for me lately. But I did do it this morning, just not very much. It just has been harder for me to like get on it for some reason. I don't know if it's boring or I don't know what the de deal is, but got on this morning, edited a video, and then went and showered and got ready and got a call that I really hope takes a different turn um, as the day progresses. We'll just say that. Abby's um, off doctor's office called. Abby's surgeon, his office, called me back finally. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it here. I called almost every single day last week because they've been telling me for weeks that the July calendar opened up last week. And I was determined to get her onto the July calendar uh, for her surgery. For those of you who are new, she's having full jaw replacement, not replacement, jaw reset surgery. It's a very invasive surgery. Um, and it takes four to five weeks to recover from. And she's wired shut. At least that's my understanding. And so this surgery has to be done during the summertime when she doesn't have to go to school. And that's why I was pretty diligent in calling all week. I think I called Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and again yesterday. And I finally got a call back today, about an hour ago. And regardless of her saying, the girl that called me, she said, oh, I finally am getting back to all my messages on my phone. I've been out of the office. Then don't be the one to schedule these appointments. <laughs> why isn't this going to a universal message box? That almost tipped me over the edge. Um, and as she explained to me that the July calendar was already full, I said, how is that even possible? It's only been five days, five business days since it opened up and I have called almost every single day to get onto that calendar. She's like, hold please. <laughs> Transfer me to what I'm assuming is the surgeon's um, actual assistant, um, probably a nurse's assistant. Um, or some sort, I don't know, um, has more knowledge of his schedule. Talked to her and, you know, she said, yes, the July calendar is already full. We're so sorry we didn't get back to you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, hey, fantastic. I need to get put onto the August schedule then. You said it's, the August schedule is open. She said, it's not open yet. I was like, I am not doing this again. Like, I'm not going to do this again. You are going to call me back the second that schedule gets open. And she's like, well, I just want to let you know that, like, there's a possibility she won't get onto the schedule this summer because we filled up the July schedule fast because these kids have been waiting on it since last year. And I was like, mm -mm, no, because everyone that I have talked to has said she is getting the surgery, including her doctor. Her doctor has said, we are going to be seeing you back here. We're going to do a consult appointment, included, which includes the CAT scan, x-rays, and consult to design her face. And that's happening this summer. I said, I don't understand where the disconnect is. This doctor has approved her for this summer. Insurance has already approved her for this summer. They wouldn't approve her for this summer if it wasn't happening this summer. I don't understand. I was, And she said, okay, I am meeting with the doctor at noon, which is in an hour now. Um, just for their regular um, calendar follow-up for the day and for the week or whatever. And she said, I'm going to sit down with him and we'll go over this and we'll figure out what we need to do. Maybe I'm not understanding. I'm reading everything in her chart. But as we have heard from or experienced in the past, there's a lot of disconnect. <laughs> and as soon as someone talks to the doctor, everything falls into place. And that's my hope because I'm... <sighs> I literally cannot, and I am only going there right now in my mind, I cannot fathom having to tell Abby she's not having this surgery this summer. I cannot have that conversation with her. I 
I can't as a mom. And I can't even tell Jason what's going on right now because he will be livid and he's at work and I can't put him into that mood when he is at work. So I have to sit in this alone here at home until the doctor's office calls me back and I'm really hoping that I'm happier when I talk to you guys next. I really hope we have better news. Hey, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, Dr. Phil needs to close space in both arches and anticipates this will take at least six to nine months. So they're planning for surgery, for jaw surgery in December of 2023. <sighs> but most likely spring slash summer of 2024. I This is not what we had. I literally had a consult appointment like like months ago, clearing her for surgery. Insurance has cleared her for surgery. Like I don't- This conversation took place um, April 20th. With who? With doctors and doctor. Who is doctor and what does he have to do with this surgery? I'm, I'm confused. I thought this was Abby's doctor for, okay, give me a second. I really hope this is a mistake. I have no idea what they're talking about. This is... I got to Costco, I talked to Jason. I explained the situation to him on the phone while I kind of tried to make myself feel better about going, like, before I got out of the car. And, uh... The doctor called the second I got out of my car, so I came back to the car and turned the camera on to record it for him, just to have any information. And right off the bat, they were like, the doctor discussed with this unknown doctor, I don't even know who this other doctor is, that she's not ready for this surgery. I don't understand what's happening. Her insurance has cleared her. This surgeon has cleared her. We literally have one appointment left to design her new jaw and her new face. I don't understand what's happening. Do you mind giving me um, Abby's orthodontist name and, and his clinic location? Hang on, I'm literally shaking right now. I have no answer. I've just called that doctor that claimed they have put a hold on Abby's surgery. There's no notes in, in Abby's orthodontic file from that doctor regarding holding off on the surgery. There's no documentation. There's no phone call to me. There's no nothing. The, the last communication they have listed for Abby and her orthodontic is the approval for surgery, ironically, as of last September, and to get braces on in order to follow the process and the timeline for surgery this summer. I'm like literally shaking right now. <sighs> And that orthodontist isn't in the office today. Of course, they're never in the office the day you have something wrong. The surgeon is supposed to be calling this orthodontist and the orthodontist is supposed to be calling me back as soon as that doctor is in the office. So I won't have an answer today. And I can't tell Abby any of this. I can't even post this video until I get information figured out. She was familiar with the patient when she was familiar with Abby when we called and when doctors spoke to her. Yeah, she is her doc she is her doctor. I've since called their office and confirmed okay. that that is her doctor. Yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. And then did she chat with you about the the timing and the six to nine months for the um? Um, no, because they have no documentation of said conversation. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I don't even understand what's going on. Because I have one person, t like I'm really like. I'm happy to call back and talk to Dr. Well, she's not in the office today. Okay. She's in the office tomorrow. I'm really concerned about all of this. So a question to you that I guess you could ask Doctor about, and and I may need to have a consult with him and my husband okay. about all of this. My question is, how come he approved it and sent the information? for the approval to insurance and why has insurance approved the surgery if he didn't approve the surgery? Like, I don't understand what happened. So we put the surgical plans in and I can definitely have you chat with him too. We put the surgical plans in to start working on them, whether or not patient is ready so that insurance, they, cause they take a long time to process through insurance. So yes, eventually she will need jaw surgery. So that's why we put the plans in so that insurance can start working on it. It's a lot of back and forth. It's letters of medical necessity. It's, it's our insurance team working on it. We put through a lot of these jaw procedures through our insurance department. So that's why we submit the case request, knowing that the patient is going to eventually need jaw surgery so we can start to work on it on the insurance. This has been quite um, 
the past 24 hours. It's literally been 24 hours since this whole, um, literally 24 hours since this all started to fall apart for Abby. Um, I've had multiple um, conversations with both um, Abby's orthodontist and her surgeon's office. I was gonna have it all filmed all the conversations mainly for Jason to be able to hear the conversations hear the information firsthand um, so that I didn't have to like busy myself writing things down but I'm not gonna bore you with all that information there's a lot of back and forth I am actually hoping to have a consult appointment with the surgeon um, or not a consult just a conversation with him today at 4 I had initially um, not agreed to that because I didn't have time this afternoon because I actually has to go to cheer, but I can talk to him while I walk. And Jason likely won't be able to be on that call, um, but I'm waiting to hear back if they can actually. Anyway, I'd canceled, said no to that one, have an appointment set up for next week, but now I want to take care of it more because I it's hard to have this information in my head and not be able to share it with Abby. And just so you guys all know, this isn't going live until Abby finds out. So might not fall in line with dates <laughs> if that is the case because at this point Abby doesn't know that there's anything wrong. My kids know that there's something wrong because they've seen me crying for two days now. Well all of yesterday and today. Um, I went to bed at 8 o'clock last night when I got home um, with Ashley after she went to a church activity. So they know something is wrong. They don't know who <laughs> I'm upset about or who all, all these calls are with. I've had two calls this morning with the orthodontist and my father um, that they saw me crying through and then a conversation with Jason in the car so that they didn't hear the conversation. <clears throat> As of right now, and I again am going to follow up with the surgeon and get an idea Abby's orthodontist, as of her latest appointment checkup, is not ready to have this surgery. I, in talking to my father, the reasons that the orthodontist has given may not necessarily be necessarily valid enough to delay surgery. And that's what I wanna have a conversation with the surgeon about. A lot of the reasons, I'll just list them here for you, um, that she is not in a wire on the braces that is the strong enough, thick enough wire for surgery, you have to progressively get into that thick wire um, and that wire ultimately will have little um, brackets on it to wire her shut um, after the surgery is done. And that progression of those wires um, is painful unless you go slowly in order to get to that final wire. That Those wires are not part of the brace process, it is just a slow progression to get to the thick wire um, in order to have that one uh, ready for surgery. So there is pain involved if you go fast. I'll come back to that one. Then there's the issue of the extractions she's had needing to be closed up. Um, she's had four teeth pulled and four wisdom teeth taken out. Again, I'll come back to that. And then the final one is that the doctor, the orthodontist, wants there to be a bigger gap between the jaw bones, between the teeth, in order for the jaw, the surgeon to go in and break that jaw, reset it in the, in the correct location, which is the whole point of the whole surgery. Those points back in order. The wire that is placed in the teeth, because I have had family members have this surgery, it's genetic, came from my side of the family. My brother has had the surgery, my dad has had the surgery, and my niece has now had the surgery. My brother did not have that wire put in progressively to get to the strong wire. He had that wire put in during surgery. That's the only time it was necessary to have. He had it put in during surgery. He went in with normal braces. He had never had a progressive wire put into place. He just had it put in during surgery. He came out and he's like, wow, I have a stronger wire in my mouth. Where'd that come from? Obviously he couldn't talk. He was wired shut, but it was not there before he had surgery. So that's a question I have with my doctor. Second question, I'm talking to, this is all in talking to my dad who is a physician and we have also had siblings, him, he's had children have this surgery. Second question with the um, teeth being fully covered after being extracted, that can take years. And as my dad keeps pointing out, if Abby were in a car accident and had to have jaw reconstructive surgery from said accident, none of that would be in play. They would go ahead and have the surgery. They wouldn't wait a year in order to construct her jaw to wait for those teeth to fully cover over. They wouldn't do that. So is that necessarily something that we need to wait for? I don't know. That's a question for the surgeon. The third thing is that gap in the jaw. And is that actually necessary to wait for? And how long do we think that might take? Are we waiting on the, are the other things 
the longer portion of the waiting period or is that jaw separation the longer portion of the waiting period and or do we need to wait for that? Do we truly need to wait for that or how long will that take? So I have a lot of questions for the surgeon. Um, I'm really hoping I can talk to him today and Jason wants to be able to have the conversation but one of our employees called out sick today. Life happens and I have all the information in my head trying to get it documented but um, our biggest worry was that even though we've had insurance approve it, we thought we were going ahead with surgery this summer. We were worried that it would nullify this insurance approval if we were gonna push it into next year, and it's not. It's just that they, they process the insurance approval after a certain point in time, and then it doesn't matter if a year goes by before the child has this surgery, the insurance is still approved. It's just sometimes it can take time to get the insurance approved. I don't have any more than that. I have a lot of concerns, I have a lot of questions. I did let the orthodontist that I am not a, in, I'm not happy at all with the fact that she made a decision to, in uh, well in my mind she canceled the surgery. She, If she had had any communication with me, she would have known that she had canceled the surgery and push, pushed it out a year to a year and a half. Regardless, she made a decision as a doctor, called Abby's other doctor, made a decision with him and had zero communication with me about said conversation, about said decision, which is a life-changing decision. No communication with me and I let her know. I let her know in no unspoken words that that was not okay and that will never happen again. I, Mama Bear came out. My mom taught me, well, as my dad kept saying, do this like your mom would have taught you. Do it like she taught you. Because my mom was a silent bear, but she could growl when she needed to. She taught me well. I've stood my ground. I've let them know that their mistakes that they have made. I've let them know that they will not make those mistakes again. i let them know that they need to communicate with me at every step in the game. She tried to, the orthodontist tried to, oh, I almost wish I had document or recorded that part of the conversation. I turned the camera off. She tried to tell me um, that I, she understood. Let me try and get her condescending voice. I understand as a mom that it's hard to not have control. We like to have control of our kids and their situations and it's hard. And I, my steam was blowing out the top of my head and I was like, you need to back up. I am not trying to control this situation. You gave us a time frame from time of braces going on to surgery approval. You gave us a time frame of six months based on Abby, not just based on like, every kid who goes through this process. You told us six months from time of braces going on. Her surgeon gave us the same time frame. I am not trying to control the situation. I am basing this off of information you gave me and you apparently gave me the wrong information. So this is on you, not me trying to control a situation. I'm using information that I was given by professionals and that information was given to me inaccurately. <sighs> she was like, I don't remember giving you that information. I said, where would I have gotten that information from? Where would I have this basis of information? Why would I have tried to call and schedule this surgery now if I had come up with that information out of a hat? And she's like, that's a good point. I said, it's because two professional doctors gave me this timeline. You're included. Now, I haven't spoken to her, her surgeon yet. Um, and I have dealt with him. He is a very good guy, a very professional doctor. And I know that my conversation with him is going to be different, except that I will, I will have a conversation with him. Why did you tell me she was going to have this surgery this summer if that wasn't going to be the case? Why did you tell me to schedule it if that's not the case? So this is a long video. I'm gonna keep it going and I don't wanna, I have to keep this going. I have to keep the conversations going with these two doctors and figure it out regardless. And then we have to find time to let Abby know. Regardless of what that time frame looks like, it is going to be a really devastating. It's not happening in July and it's likely not happening this year unless those points that I've mentioned, um, I can convince and the doctor is convinced we can alter and that don't matter and we can push for a surgery this summer or this fall. Not this fall, it'll have to be this summer or over Christmas break, which sucks. We've already canceled our whole summer. I don't have any vacations planned. I canceled seeing my family. We haven't planned anything, so now it's too late. Everything is gonna be booked. It is what it is, but it's unfortunate that because of someone's miscommunication, Abby's life is, not her life, this is life-changing surgery. And the mental capacity to handle even waiting as far as she, as long as she has, I can't. It's going to devastate her. 
All right, I am gonna update you guys probably for a final time because nothing else is going to change from here. Just talked to Abby's surgeon and got a lot of stuff explained and understood and communicated. All right, I have to pause a few times as people walk by me. I was able to talk to the surgeon and he understands the worry that we have in talking to Abby about all of this. So many people on this trail. It was busy when I started. There's another biker coming by. Um, kind of explained the process more. I felt bad that we had the assumption that it was gonna happen soon. He said, according to the last time I talked to you, it was. It was going to be in July or August, whenever you could schedule it. He said, unfortunately, the conversation that I had with the orthodontist did change that opinion for me because I only want to do this surgery one time for Abby. It's a big surgery. We want to do it right. I want to have the right timing. So the issue with the extra teeth um, not being like the gaps where the ex teeth were extracted, those gaps do need to close in. But he did say that probably the reason why the orthodontist wants to completely close that gap and get the teeth as close to their final destination as possible is so that Abby doesn't have to have braces on for an extended time after the surgery. And I told him, I was point blank, I said, can I be completely honest with you? And he's like, I know where you're going with this. And I said, I don't think Abby's gonna care. I think she cares more about making sure that the surgery is done than she does about being in braces longer after. He says, so I completely understand that and I will advocate, advocate for that to an extent. He says, I am not going to let myself do the surgery before she's ready, but I will advocate and tell the orthodontist, you get her to this point, whatever that distance is between teeth, I don't know, and then I'm gonna give the okay to go ahead and do surgery and you're gonna keep her in braces longer because that's what Abby wants to do. And he has no problem with that. He even went on to say, I wanna talk to Abby. Keep your appointment for next Tuesday that I have with him because I didn't think I was gonna get this appointment today. Keep that appointment, we're gonna make it a Zoom appointment. I wanna talk to Abby. I wanna reassure that we're doing everything we can at the right time frame for her in this surgery. So I really appreciated that. Um, he understands that there's a, a mindset, a mental worry for Abby, and that's part of the reason why he wants to have a conversation with her to make sure she's okay. Um, that we just take this six months at a time. We have a shortened window. He'll look at her again in six months and then we'll reevaluate. And we could possibly do it this fall. We might actually have to wait until Christmas break for the logistics of the actual surgery. Um, but he's willing to look at that in a shorter time frame versus waiting a whole year and then looking at it. So I feel good about it. Um, it's just, I'm gonna let the week go before we tell Abby. So we'll be breaking that news to her together, me and Jason. Um, and we're just gonna move through the process and support her and let her be upset. All right, so that's it. We will end this video here. Um, the video will go live, um, obviously with Abby's permission and after I have spoken to her. So it might be out of time frame because this has been multiple days now of us figuring it out. So you'll see me in multiple outfits, multiple settings, and that's my life. I'm just putting out fires little by little and uh, working through to advocate for my kids, but also teaching them to advocate for themselves. So take care. Um, keep, your, keep Abby in your prayers. If you do so, keep her in your thoughts. Um, she's going to have a hard time with this and she'll need some extra support from the other side, kind of build her up. So take care. 
We'll see you guys next time. Easy, easy on our tiptoes.